Great show. Roxanne, Roxanne. All she want to do is party up. Additional notions of privacy, like the confidentiality of personal information, are challenged by advancements in today's digital technology. Big tech companies like Facebook and Google have admitted to collecting vast amounts of personal data for advertising reasons. Facebook, a social media company, has over 1.85 billion users, which is nearly 25% of the entire world. The app collects all kinds of personal data on each user, including their birthday, email, name, and address. So, why do social media companies like Facebook collect all of this information? Well, they use it to offer user-targeted advertisements. User-targeted advertisements are proven to be 2.7 times more effective than general advertisements. Here we have Bob. When watching normal TV, Bob would be shown a lot of unrelated ads to him. For example, tampons. Bob does not need tampons. However, if he was actually watching a fitness channel and the advertisements are related to what he's watching, there's a higher chance that it can convert a sale from him. This is why user-targeted advertisements are a lot more effective than general ads. From an ethical standpoint, our traditional notions of privacy, like our right to be left alone, are being compromised and infringed on by social media, as a third party is viewing one's personal information. Although these social media companies don't actually have malicious intents and only use your data for advertising, those who do have malicious intents can easily access your personal data, and proof of this happened during the Facebook breaches. In this digital era, you can easily find someone else's, or in our case, Bob's phone number, location, and what he has been up to recently. Yet, in our in the new digital world, it is nearly impossible for an individual to function normally in society without the internet or social media. Bob needs social media to talk with his friends while keeping himself entertained and updated on the latest trends. This leads to a dilemma for Bob, as he wants more privacy but also needs to socialize and function in society. This is the real and core issue of technology. One cannot break out of this cycle of using these social medias. On the legal side, there are indeed laws to protect your privacy online. For example, in the UK, it is required for all websites to ask for permission before using cookies. The issue, however, is that government regulations cannot adapt fast enough to the rapid evolution of digital technology. A new fad or social media can pop up, but legislation regulating things like this can take months, if not years. And by then, a lot of people's privacy may have already been compromised. An example of this was when a new trendy app called FaceApp popped up, where you take a picture of your face and it would use deep learning technology to make you look old. What I didn't realize, however, was that the app was made by a Russian studio and all of the user pictures and data was being stored by the company, raising privacy concerns. This is an example of regulation not being put in place fast enough for the rapidly expanding digital. Only time will tell if the government can adapt their regulative and legislative procedures. First thing you can do is to not fill out your social media information with your real information. So when creating an account, don't use your personal email, your real birthday, don't use your real address or phone number, and for your name, just use your initials. That way, the companies don't actually know your real personal information. Second, make sure to keep your social and real life activity private. So if you're going on vacation, don't post that to everyone while you're on vacation. Anyone can then know that you are away from your house, which can pose real privacy threats. Also, make sure to just upload less pictures and give them information. So for example, you don't always need to pick, post pictures of how your cat's doing or if you're going to the washroom or what kind of like food you like. Now onto the technical stuff. I'll just show you how to do these things on Facebook. So essentially, if you go to settings and click on privacy, there is a ton of options for you and you, you can tailor the privacy to your own needs. For example, if you don't want anyone else but you or your close friends to see your posts or send you friend requests, it's all changeable 
on your privacy settings. If you then go to ad settings, you can change how your ads are tailored to you. So if you don't want user targeted ads, you can turn them off and you can also disable cookies from other browsers that feed Facebook data. All of these features are customizable now by Facebook and it's really up to your own needs. So if you want to be fully private, then you would just turn everything so that only you can see it. If you're kind of private but want to show some of your friends your things, you can then set it so that only your friends can see some of your personal data, like your email or your phone. And that's it. Now you know the impacts of digital technology and user targeted advertisements, the legal and ethical issues, and how to prevent and protect yourself from digital privacy invasion.